Here we want to find the nth term of each sequence and then use it to find the 25th term. So our first sequence is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now first of all, we want to determine what type of sequence it is. So we're looking for our pattern, what's happening, as we're going from one term to the next. So in this case, we see that we're adding 2 each time. And that implies that this is an arithmetic sequence, and we know that d is equal to 2. That's my common difference. Now, there's always multiple ways to do these problems. So I'm going to um, approach them both ways so you can decide which way makes most sense to you. The first way is to actually use the formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence, which is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So again, just to make sure that the vocabulary is okay, the nth term means I'm asking you to find a sub n. Find the formula for a sub n. So here we just pretty much fill in what we know. a sub n is equal to my first term, a sub 1, which in this case is 2, plus n minus 1 times my common difference. My common difference is also 2. So you actually could leave your formula just like this, or you could go ahead and simplify it, if you wish. That's entirely up to you. So distributing would give us 2 plus 2n minus 2, and then we see that my uh, formula simplifies to just a sub n is equal to 2 times n. So you could leave your answer in either form. You could go ahead and leave it here in that unsimplified form, or you could leave it as a sub n equals 2n, either way. So that's how you would find the nth term if you wanted to utilize um, this formula here for an arithmetic sequence. But is it really necessary to use that formula? And the answer is no. You certainly don't have to. Because if you think about this sequence of numbers, Think about it in a, in a table form for a second. We're looking at uh, my first term being 2. My second term is 4. My third term is 6. My fourth term is 8, and so on. And if you're looking at the pattern this way, this should look really familiar to you because you've studied functions that have the same pattern. A function here where the what we used to call the y values the y values are all increasing by 2 and the x values are all increasing by 1 that constant rate of change is telling you that we really have a linear function if we were looking at this in terms of a function and although we're not we're not looking at it as a function because we're not interested in graphing this the the same pattern is here so you could think of this as linear growth and if we have linear growth then we know that it would be a line if it were a function and so you could think of it in terms of slope and go well I, I have this change in y and my change in x so essentially you're thinking of this is my change in y and here's my change in x if you're trying to compare it back to when you studied linear functions so essentially your slope is 2 and we know that if we're working on writing the equation for a line and my slope is 2, then I would start out with 2n. And then the question, of course, is am I adding anything to make this um, equation work for these values? In other words, when I, for example, substitute n equals 1 into my equation, I need to make sure that I'm getting 2 for, for my first term. But you can see, when you do substitute n equals 1, you end up with 2 times 1, which gives you exactly what you wanted for your first term. So there really isn't a question mark here, or you have a question mark that is 0. So your formula works as is, a sub n equals 2n. So that's a pretty simple case, but again, wanting to demonstrate how you really can think of that common difference, what you're adding every time, as the slope if you want to compare this back to linear functions that you've studied previously. B. Now our sequence is 5, 1, negative 3, negative 7, and then negative 11. So we'll go with our formula first. So we know that an arithmetic sequence can be found by taking your first term and adding n minus 1 times d. In this case, let's establish our pattern. How are we going from one term to the next? 
How do we go from 5 to 1 and then from 1 to negative 3? So on this one, you're subtracting 4 every time. So we say that our d value, our common difference, is negative 4. So therefore, our formula, I have a squeaky pen, sorry about that. A sub n is equal to a sub 1, which is 5, plus n minus 1 times d, and my common difference is negative 4. So this would be perfectly acceptable if you wanted to leave your formula in this form. Or you could go ahead and simplify if you wish, meaning that you would need to distribute. So that would give us 5 plus, try again, that would give us 5 minus 4n plus 4. So a sub n would be equal to negative 4n plus 9. That would be our simplified form. And then we need to go ahead and find the 25th term, which I'm realizing I forgot to do on example A. You can go back and do that yourself. But really, finding the 25th term means we need to find A sub 25. But once you have your general formula, all that requires of you is just substituting in N equals 25. So negative 4 times 25 would be negative 100. And then we add 9. So the 25th term of this particular sequence would be negative 91. Okay. So now let's go back and, and look at how you could do this without the formula. Because really, this is not a formula you have to memorize. You can do all of these arithmetic sequences without a formula. So once again, thinking of what's the pattern? If we're subtracting 4 every time, that repetitive subtraction we actually could write, rewrite as multiplication. So we could start with negative 4n because we're subtracting 4 every time. And then your question is, question mark, what do I need to add or subtract to make my, uh, my sequence begin with 5? In other words, if I were to test this formula right now by plugging in 1, if you plug in 1, you're going to get that the first term of your sequence is negative 4. But you do not want the first term to be negative 4. Look over here. We want the first term to be 5. So the question is, what would I add to that? Question mark. What do I add to that so that I'm guaranteed that my first term is 5? Well, you can see we would have to add 9. I would have to add 9 here. Negative 4 plus 9 would give me my first term of 5. Therefore, my formula needs to be negative 4n plus 9. So a slightly different approach for finding the formula, but you're not required to know the a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d formula. Either way works. You get to choose. Part C. Now our sequence is 12, 17, 22, 27, and 32. So what's the pattern? How are we going from 12 to 17 and 17 to 22 and so on? It looks like we're adding 5 repetitively. So that's why the sequence is arithmetic. And that tells us that our common difference, d, is 5. So once again, if you're a person that wants to rely on the arithmetic sequence formula for finding the nth term, we'll take a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And basically just substitute in what we know. We know my first term, a sub 1, is 12. And we're going to multiply or add n minus 1 multiplied by our d value, and our common difference is 5. And you could leave it like this if you wish. Or you could go ahead and distribute. Now on this one, I'm not going to distribute. I'm going to first go over here to the other side of the page and show you how to do it without this formula. And then we'll see that we get the same thing. So once again, if we're adding 5 repetitively, if we know that common difference is 5, then we could think of repetitive addition, rewriting that as multiplication. So we're starting out with 5n. Another way of thinking about it is if you wanted to go back to a linear function and think about it as a linear function, if you're adding 5 repetitively, then 5 becomes your slope. And we know that our, our lines could always be written in slope-intercept form, where m was our slope. Well, now we're just treating 5, essentially, as our slope. But now the question is, do we need to add a number or subtract a number to make our first term 12? 
So let's go ahead and substitute in n equals 1 to see what our first term would be right now. Right now, 5 times 1, our first term is 5. That's not what we want. So we need to figure out what are we going to add to this or subtract so that our first term will be 12. In other words, 5 plus what number is going to give me 12? Well, if I added 7 here, 5 plus 7 would give me 12. So it appears that the question mark, what I need to add, would be a positive 7. Now, if you're not sure about this formula, a sub n equals 5n plus 7, then I would encourage you to test it out on one of your num another numbers in the sequence. So let's say I keep counting here. Let's look at the last number that was given to us. The last term right here was 32. And if you count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that was the fifth term. So let's test out our formula to see if it works on a sub 5 the fifth term, which is found by plugging in 5 for n. So that would be 5 times 5 plus 7, which is 25 plus 7, which indeed is 32. So we've confirmed that our formula works. So a sub n equals 5n plus 7 is a, a, an alternative form of what we found over here on the left-hand side. And now if I do come back here and actually distribute this, you'll notice very quickly we get 12 plus 5n minus 5, and indeed 12 minus 5 is 7. So you see that you do get that same formula over here as well. Example D. So what's our pattern? From 99 to 100, 100 to 101, Looks like we're adding 1 every time. That's what makes the sequence arithmetic. So we say that our common difference is 1. So again, on the left side is for those of you who like to use your arithmetic sequence formula for the nth term. So if you're using the formula, then my first term is 99. And I'm adding n minus 1 times d, and d is 1 in this case. Okay. If you're a person that would prefer not to know that formula or memorize it, then let's just think about this in terms of uh, repetitive addition. I'm adding 1 repetitively, so that's like having 1 times n, which we'll just write as n. Again, thinking of this 1 as a, a slope, if you wish, the slope of a line, if we're adding 1 to the y values each time. And then, of course, we need to adjust, question mark, what would we add or subtract in this case to make my, my sequence work, meaning I need my first term to be 99. So go ahead and substitute in 1 for n, see what you'll get. Of course, that's just 1 times 1. So right now, my first term is actually 1, which is not what I want. So the question is, what would I need to add so that my first term is 99? So in this case, we need to add, there we go, we need to add 98. 1 plus 98 would give me 99. So my formula should be a sub n is equal to 1 times n plus 98, written a little cleaner. That would just, of course, be n plus 98. Go back over here to the left side. If you want to go ahead and, and think of this um, as simplifying, um, either you could think of it as distributing the 1 or just n minus 1 times 1 is n minus 1. So a sub n is equal to 99 plus n minus 1, which we see is indeed n plus 98. And if I wanted my 25th term, a sub 25, then I'd be just substituting in 25 for n, which I believe gives us, uh, let's see, 123. So the 25th term of the sequence would be 123. Example E. What's the pattern here? We're going from 4.3 to 5, and then from 5 to 5.7. So it looks like we're adding 0.7 repetitively. So again, that's what makes the sequence arithmetic. Because we have a common difference, we're adding the same number, 
each time in order to get the next term. So we want to find the nth term. So again, on the left side here, I'll go ahead and utilize the formula for the nth term, if you're a person that likes to use the formula. Then you just have to substitute in your first term, which would be 4.3, plus n minus 1 times d, d is 0.7. And this would be acceptable. You could leave your formula just like this. Let me go to the right-hand side and talk about how to do it if you didn't know what your formula was. So if we're adding 0.7 repetitively, then we could rewrite that repetitive addition as multiplication. That's the same as 0.7 times n. And then we know that we're going to need to adjust the formula and add or subtract a number so that I can ensure that my first term is 4.3. So we go ahead and test it out. Substitute in 1 for n. So 0.7 times 1 would give me just 0.7 as my first term. So now the question is, well, what would I add to that so that I'm getting 4.3 There we go. 4.3 <laughs> as our first term. And it looks like we would need to add We'd need to add, let's see, 3.6. Yep, 0.7 plus 3.6 would give us 0.3. So it looks like if I adjust my formula, then I'm looking at 0.7n plus 3.6. Always a good idea to test it out, though, to be sure that it actually works. Pick any other term in your sequence. Say I come over here and want to pick this, this last one, which is 7.1. Notice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is the fifth term in the sequence, so let's test this out with a sub 5. So that would be 0 0.7 times 5 plus 3.6, which is going to be 3.5 plus 3.6, which would give us 7.1 which is exactly what we wanted. So it appears that our formula works. And again, on the left side here, if you did go ahead and distribute the formula here, you would notice you would get the exact same simplified version of what we have on the right-hand side because you'd have 0.7n minus 0.7 and combining like terms, 4.3 minus 0.7 indeed would leave us with 3.6. And then to get the 25th term, you're just going to substitute in 25 for n. So 0 0.7 times 25 plus 3.6. So 0.7 times 25 should be 17.5. And then you're adding that to 3.6. So that looks like... 21.1. 25th term of our sequence should be 21.1.